Hello everyone, Dan 14 Prime here, doing another video share out today with the Prime One Studios one third scale Jorge Jimenez art inspired Joker on Throne. This is the DX bonus version. Just finished unboxing them here on the Kitchen Island. You can check that out on my Instagram, same handle Dan 14 Prime. As always, when I get these things in, I put a story up and then save it down into my profile for reference. So you'll find the unboxing parts and pieces out there on my Instagram, Dan 14 Prime. Just thought I'd do a quick video shout here before I put them on display. Hey guys, before we jump out to the review, be sure to check me out at the Superhero Lounge. That's superherolounge.com. My startup collectible store, you'll find a growing inventory of new high-end collectibles from Prime One Studios, XM Studios, Sideshow, Iron Studios, all the high-end statue makers, as well as a handful of used display pieces we're working through. And new for this week, what's going to be a growing inventory of collectible hardcover editions like Omnibus, Absolutes, etc. Links down in the description below, superherolounge.com. Be sure to check that out. All right, guys, let's jump into this share out. Now, as mentioned, this is the Jorge Jimenez art-inspired Joker, which is just a fantastic contemporary take on a very classically styled Joker. Even cooler, he's on throne in this sort of movie theater type setup. This piece pairs with the punchline, which I didn't get. I wanted a low profile on throne Joker. Gonna get that penguin, put them side by side so they'll work together very nicely at about the same height level. But if you wanna go for like a diorama pairing, there is that punchline out there as well to accompany this piece. Now, as mentioned, this is DX and bonus. The bonus statue piece is this left hand mangled half cow mask that you can put on with a nice felt cover on the inside to protect the portrait should they touch. We'll get that on in a little bit. The other bonus piece is a Jorge Jimenez signed art print. You can check that out on my Instagram. Again, it was in the unboxing, saved down into my profile out there, Dan 14 Prime. That right hand holding the Joker cane is DX, as well as this right hand clown mask. The normal right hand would then be this dual battering wielding joker battering wielding hand that matches the batterings stuck into the throne and then this more relaxed spread eagle type leg position is the normal uh, statue piece whereas the cross leg is dx so we'll get all that on the statue just wanted to show you what we we're working with to start off all that comes nice and tidy in just one box as well so pretty efficient with shipping let's just start off here down low Checking out some of this base. Again, he's sort of in this movie theater type setup. You got some old movie reels here. Get this Joker on Throne J thing going here. Movie ticket down here on the ground by his foot. Battering on the ground. A little kind of Prime One cutie. Batman doll. With the, the mouth zipped shut. Backwards J over here. So this is big sort of red gold trimmed throne movie, movie theater type setting. Around the back, you got all the ha ha ha, some random piece of paper, something stuck on there. Kind of torn up brick type look. Big J again, more of the ha ha ha. So it's nice overall throne. I mean, I like the whole vibe it gives off. It's nice and wide, has some presence for what's otherwise a pretty short type of piece, maybe 20 inches tall, something like that. You can see back here all the movie theater type design and seat. Some more of the ha 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 back in here. Again, the gold trim's got some nice shading in it and everything. So it looks very, very good. It's not like super ornate type um, uh, throne type piece like we've seen with some on throne type pieces. But overall, I'd say it's very, very good. Now, what really starts to rock when you go up into this piece is these legs. These like really pop out of the box. Definitely called that out when I did the unboxing. He's got some plain black shoes on, nice leather pattern and texture, shoelaces, nice slick socks. I got some sheen on them. The pants do such a great job with like um, the pinstriping in there. You know, it's, it's a textured pinstriping, not just sort of painted or, um, type pinstripe. It's actually got a texture in there. Um, very l sheen, kind of almost light, shining off them type look. I don't want to say glossy, but you know, they really sort of are 
vibrant, that purple. It's got different dark and light shades on it. So these really pop. The cross leg look is great. Got the foot here. Can you see the tongue of the shoe and the ankles going down in there? Very cool. Pant leg. You can see the movement. So the whole just cloth, the way everything lays and creases, all very natural in the legs and looks really, really good. Outstanding job. Get the lower leg pieces. It's all one section. I'm just going to kind of come up with the camera here so you can see kind of from the top side view. Looking down into the chair, down to the seat. The black leather jacket sort of thrown over the shoulders. See how that looks and sort of comes in behind him. Sits behind, of course, the suit jacket. Now, we come up into the torso. Basically, all of this is one piece into the throne. So you just put the legs on. The Joker's torso and all that is there. Again, I think all of the clothing, the creases, the breaking, the way everything lays, excellently done. They do a pretty nice job carrying up this very vibrant leg paint application and everything up into the suit fades away a little bit but it's it's still there you don't quite have the uh texture it's not as sort of creased um obviously probably wouldn't be the pants are meant to be that way special jacket still got a bit of a sheen on it they detail some aspects of the jacket he's got kind of a black collar around there it's laying over the leather jacket here uh it's got some black buttons now the suit they made those buttons all purple there, which is fine on the cuff. Got a green shirt underneath. You can see his arm white underneath there, the purple gloves. Big green vest here, green buttons. I'm fine with the buttons being the same color. I think that's probably what you would do. Otherwise, it starts to look a little probably busy with too much odd detail. If you try to make all these black or white or something for a button color, I think blending it looks good. The vest here, a nice dark green looks good. What I don't love is up in here, he's got a green shirt on. You can see a lighter green cuff sticking out. Back into there, they sort of fade the dark green into the light green and behind the bow tie. And the collar comes out a little bit shaded lighter as well. I don't love that. I feel like the shirt, maybe they're trying to act like a shadowing type play there. I probably just would have went with the shirt behind it more of the lighter green to get some more contrast. Maybe made the bow tie piece uh, a separate magnetized piece if that's what you need to do to help enable the paint application. So right there is kind of not my favorite part of the statue. But that's a pretty small piece of the overall surface area. You know, kind of sits behind his hand a little bit too. So not a big deal. Just kind of a finer critique on the piece. But if we give this guy a bit of a spin, again, you can see the suit jacket down here. And we'll just give him a little bit of spin. You can see how this is the leather jacket just sort of sitting on his shoulders, kind of even the sleeve here, you know, breaking down into the, uh, the back of the chair. Obviously, it's not on. It's just kind of hanging there. Looks good. I think the black leather jacket's pretty nice. Sort of sitting back on his chair there. You can see the shoulders. I like how they kind of come up a bit. Again, very natural looking flow. Got his hand sticking out there, holding the cane. Cane's all right. Nothing special, but it works. See the jacket through there is all. So very nice, very nice looking, sort of classic type Joker outfit. You know, but we're going to come in with more of the contemporary take, certainly with the portrait really making it happen with Jorge's art. And here we are here with the money shot. I mean, that portrait is what makes the piece. We just get the one portrait. Very, very good, though. Again, it's like right off those pages of the comic. It's definitely a great looking um, look for the Joker. The white face, but there's sort of a lot of dark wash kind of shading over it. The hand up there kind of just resting on the cheek. He's got the big smile, the teeth. Pointy nose, you know, just the big mouth and everything. It's, it's really great. The portrait is fantastic. And the hair, very cool. Dark green, light green highlights all kind of poofed out, whatever, spiked out and everything. Looks sweet. It's a really fantastic portrait. Awesome looking Joker. So we can hit some of the swap outs here. Again, this is the normal hand 
just um ugh. there we go again bonus piece here some felt in there Th these things really kind of do come close to the face so the felt's a nice touch because that really basically touches so there you go with the just half cut mangled cow that looks pretty cool as well the only downside is obviously it blocks so much of the portrait which is one of the best things about the piece but something to do to mix it up of course here at the right hand again the cane is dx again purple cane just the the j there and you can go for the clown mask looking thing it's nice too sits a little bit wide over there and then last here is just the regular you know dual wielding joker batter ring looking thing that would be your normal type look which looks pretty good too and then lastly here is the legs again i wanted the cross leg look that's why i got the dx so it's 1500 versus 1300 for the regular but these just pull like straight out You can see wherever there's contact risk, you can see these felt pads that they're using just to um, not scratch stuff up. And these are the normal legs with the spread eagle type look. And then this here is basically the entire normal setup, which I think is pretty good too. If you don't want to pay 200 bucks for the Cross legs is the main reason you do it, but again, you get a handful of other hand swap outs, but this is pretty good. There you have it, guys. Joker on throne. Jorge Jimenez inspired. I dig the piece. Tidy footprint, too. It's like 20 inches tall, 20 inches wide, maybe 13 inches deep. Obviously meant to have the punchline behind it, which would make it deeper and taller still as a set. But I dig it as a standalone Joker piece, you know, with just some different display options. Like I said, I want to Set him next to the penguin, actually, when he comes in. So we'll just be sitting in a little bit of a lower space together. 500 of these uh, DX bonus versions. I think 100 of the regular. And I'm honestly not sure if they even made just a regular DX without the bonus. I can't seem to find that anywhere. But if they did, there's probably a few hundred of those as well. So on the lower end of ES, by Prime 1 standards, I've got the Iron Studios piece, the new 52 look, and a more classic Joker look. So I think this one brings something totally different. Again, seated, more contemporary look. So having two of those, those two, are different enough, I think, to have in the collection still. But I will say for the price, you can get that Iron Studios Joker. That thing's a steal, especially if you're into either of those portraits, you know, new 52 or a more classic looking Joker. That's a great piece too. It does a lot of the same things very well that this piece does well with the clothing and all of that stuff. But yeah, super solid piece here. Definitely has its strengths, has a couple things I was wish were a little bit better, but on the whole, satisfied. You know, I think it's delivering what I expected. So pretty happy with it overall. Again, check out the unboxing out on my Instagram, same handle, Dan14Prime. Check some links down in the description below, especially out to the superherolounge.com, my new collectible store startup, as well as my Instagram links and affiliate links down below. All that supports the channel, so appreciate it. Thanks for checking out the video. And I'll see you next time.